We recommend you to take notes, as they can improve your memory and help connect information. Chapter 4 The Man Who Didn't Look Right A paramedic with years of experience noticed a change in her father-in-law's face and urged him to go to the hospital. After undergoing an examination, the man was found to have a blockage to a major artery and was at risk of a heart attack. The paramedic had unknowingly developed the ability to recognize the change in the distribution pattern of blood in the face, which occurs when major arteries are obstructed. This ability is an example of how the human brain becomes a prediction machine by analyzing repeated experiences and cataloging the information for future use. The brain encodes lessons learned through experience, and with enough practice, people can pick up on cues that predict certain outcomes without consciously thinking about it. People underestimate how much their brains and bodies can notice relevant cues in a situation is the foundation for every habit they have. Hunger and appetite are examples of autopilot responses that the body handles without conscious thought. The Habit Scorecard the Japanese railway system has a safety system called pointing and calling that involves train conductors and staff pointing at objects and calling out commands to reduce mistakes and accidents. This process raises awareness from a non-conscious habit to a more conscious level. It is effective in reducing errors by up to 85% and cutting accidents by 30%. To become more aware of your own behavior, you can use a habit scorecard, which involves making a list of your daily habits and marking them as good, bad, or neutral. The marks you give depend on your situation and goals. Here's a sample of where your list might start. Wake up. Turn off alarm. Check my phone. Go to the bathroom. Weigh myself. Take a shower. And so on. Once you have a full list, look at each behavior and ask yourself, is this a good habit, a bad habit, or a neutral habit? If it is a good habit, write plus next to it. If it is a bad habit, write comma. If it is a neutral habit, write equal sign. The goal is to simply notice what is actually going on. Observe your thoughts and actions without judgment or internal criticism. You need to be aware of your habits before you can change them. Chapter 5 The Best Way to Start a New Habit Researchers in Great Britain conducted a study to find the best way to build better exercise habits. They divided 248 subjects into three groups, control, motivation, and implementation intention. The third group made specific plans for when and where they would exercise during the following week. The implementation intention group had a much higher success rate in exercising than the other two groups, indicating that implementation intentions are effective for sticking to goals. Implementation intentions leverage time and location cues, and they increase the odds of people sticking with habits like recycling, studying, going to bed early, and stopping smoking. The simple way to apply this strategy to your habits is to fill out this sentence. People who make specific plans for when and where they will perform a new habit are more likely to follow through. Many people lack clarity, not motivation, and it's not always obvious when and where to take action. Once an implementation intention has been set, people don't need to rely on motivation or chance to perform the habit. Habit Stacking, a simple plan to overhaul your habits. Denis Diderot, a French philosopher, lived in poverty for most of his life until he sold his personal library to Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia, for 1,000 pounds, which was a substantial amount of money at the time. Diderot used his newfound wealth to upgrade his possessions, which led to a cycle of consumption known as the Diderot Effect. This pattern is common, where obtaining a new possession leads to additional purchases. One of the ways to build new habits is through habit stacking, which is pairing a new habit with a current habit. This method can be used to design an obvious cue for nearly any habit. Your morning routine habit stack might look like this. 1. After I pour my morning cup of coffee, I will meditate for 60 seconds. 2. After I meditate for 60 seconds, I will write my to-do list for the day. Habit stacking allows you to insert new behaviors into your current routines. 
You can expand your habit stack by adding new habits, such as placing a book on your pillow before taking a shower, to an existing routine like waking up, making your bed, and taking a shower. This approach enables you to create a set of simple rules that guide your future behavior, ensuring you always have a game plan for which action comes next. Once you get comfortable with this approach, you can develop general habit stacks to guide you in appropriate situations. The key to creating a successful habit stack is to choose the right cue, time, and location with a frequency that matches your desired habit. To do this, brainstorm a list of your current habits and choose ones that fit the bill. Be specific and immediately actionable in choosing your cue to avoid inconsistency and use strategies like implementation intentions and habit stacking to increase the odds of success. Specificity is crucial for creating tightly bound new habits to specific cues. Chapter 6 Motivation is overrated, environment often matters more. How to design your environment for success and Thorndike, a primary care physician at Massachusetts General Hospital, conducted a study to improve the eating habits of hospital staff and visitors by changing the choice architecture of the hospital cafeteria. They rearranged the drinks so that water was available next to every food station, and over three months, soda sales decreased by 11.4%, while bottled water sales increased by 25.8%. They also made similar adjustments to the food and saw similar results, all without talking to anyone about changing their behavior. The environment is a major factor that influences human behavior. People tend to behave in certain ways based on their surroundings, and this is why habits are context-dependent. The equation B equals F by Kurt Lewin suggests that behavior is a function of the person in their environment. Businesses have tested this equation and found that suggestion impulse buying is triggered when a shopper sees a product for the first time and visualizes a need for it. This is why expensive brand names are often featured in easy-to-reach locations on store shelves, while cheaper alternatives are tucked away in harder-to-reach spots. The more obviously available a product or service is, the more likely people are to try it. Perception is directed by the sensory nervous system, and humans perceive the world through sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. However, the most powerful of all human sensory abilities is vision. The context is the cue. Whenever possible, avoid mixing the context of one habit with another. When you start mixing contexts, you'll start mixing habits, and the easier ones will usually win out. When I started my career as an entrepreneur, I would often work from my couch or at the kitchen table. In the evenings, I found it very difficult to stop working. There was no clear division between the end of work time and the beginning of personal time. A stable environment where everything has a place and a purpose is an environment where habits can easily form. By linking a habit to a particular context, we can train ourselves to create new habits. Habits can be easier to change in a new environment because we are not battling with old environmental cues. Chapter 7 The Secret to Self-Control During the Vietnam War, it was discovered that soldiers who were addicted to heroin were able to eliminate their addiction quickly upon returning home due to the lack of environmental triggers. This contradicted the belief at the time that heroin addiction was a permanent and irreversible condition. Recent research has shown that people with good self-control are better at structuring their lives in a way that avoids tempting situations and that perseverance. Grit and willpower are essential to success. But creating a more disciplined environment is the way to improve these qualities. Therefore, it is not a matter of lacking self-control but rather creating an environment that is conducive to success. If you can't seem to get any work done, leave your phone in another room for a few hours. If you're continually feeling like you're not enough, stop following social media accounts that trigger jealousy and envy. If you're wasting too much time watching television, move the TV out of the bedroom. If you're spending too much money on electronics, quit reading reviews of the latest tech gear. If you're playing too many video games, unplug the console and put it in a closet after each use. People with high self-control tend to spend less time in tempting situations. 
It's easier to avoid temptation than resist it. Chapter 8. How to Make a Habit Irresistible In the 1940s, Nico Tinbergen conducted experiments on herring gulls that showed they were genetically programmed to peck at red dots on their mother's beak to get food. Tinbergen also found that gray lag geese would roll any nearby round object back into their nest and that the bigger the object, the greater the response. Scientists refer to these exaggerated cues as supernormal stimuli. Humans are also prone to supernormal stimuli, such as junk food, which drives our reward systems into a frenzy due to our evolutionarily developed preference for calorie-dense foods. Today, Despite living in a calorie-rich environment, our brains still crave these foods because the brain's reward centers have not changed. The Dopamine-Driven Feedback Loop Scientists can track the moment a craving happens by measuring a neurotransmitter called dopamine. Dopamine is important for feeling pleasure and desire. In an experiment with rats, when dopamine was blocked, the rats lost their desire to live and died. But when the researchers gave the rats sugar, they still enjoyed it even without dopamine. Dopamine is also involved in forming habits. When we anticipate a reward, dopamine levels rise, making us motivated to act. The reward system in the brain that is activated when we receive a reward is the same system that is activated when we anticipate a reward. This is why sometimes anticipating an experience can feel better than actually experiencing it. Scientists call this the difference between wanting and liking. The dopamine spike. Your brain has parts that make you want rewards more than actually enjoying them. These parts are big and spread out, while the parts that make you feel good when you get a reward are small and few. This is why wanting things is so important, because it's what makes you do things. Every action you take is because you want something. This is why it's important to make your habits enjoyable, so that you'll want to do them again. One way to do this is called temptation bundling. This is what happens to your dopamine, before a habit is learned. A. Dopamine is released when the reward is experienced for the first time. The next time around. B. When your brain sees something that reminds you of a habit, your dopamine makes you want to do that habit. Once you've done it many times and expect a reward, you won't feel as happy when you get the reward. But if you expect a reward and don't get it, you'll feel sad because the dopamine drops. See, the sensitivity of the dopamine response can clearly be seen when a reward is provided late. D. First, the cue is identified and dopamine rises as a craving builds. Next, a response is taken, but the reward does not come as quickly as expected and dopamine begins to drop. Finally, when the reward comes a little later than you had hoped, dopamine spikes again. It is as if the brain is saying, see, I knew I was right. Don't forget to repeat this action next time. How to use temptation bundling to make your habits more attractive. Ronan Byrne, a student in Dublin, liked to watch Netflix, but knew he needed to exercise more. He used his engineering skills to connect his stationary bike to his laptop and TV and wrote a program to make Netflix only work if he was cycling at a certain speed. This helped him exercise while watching Netflix. This trick is called temptation bundling and it links something you want to do with something you need to do. If you want to watch sports, but you need to make sales calls. 1. After I get back from my lunch break, I will call three potential clients. 2. After I call three potential clients, I will check ESPN. This strategy can make almost any habit more attractive, similar to supernormal stimuli which increase our desire to take action. If you thought this was interesting, just wait until you see what we have in store for the next chapter. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest uploads.